Hi, my name is Hassan Al Tawil. I will be your trainer for this D20 training. Um, okay, so let's start with a D20 overview and let's take a look. The D20 resides in a substation. In an electrical network, uh, normally there is a generation substation, there is a transmission substation, distribution substation. The generation substation, the job of the generation substation is to uh, generate power from uh, fuel, whatever kind of fuel is given uh, at the beginning, uh, and then that power that's generated goes to a step-up transformer. The step-up transformer is used to minimize the loss of power while it is being transmitted over the power lines. And then uh, it reaches a transmission substation which has a switch yard, and this switch yard would then route the power either to another transmission substation or to a distribution substation that would then share that power with either an industrial uh, sub, uh, an industrial uh, factory or a residential area or a commercial area. So the three parts, the end consumer is either industrial, residential or commercial. Okay? And the job of the D20 is to harvest the data from the substations and relay that data to the control center, allow the control center to carry remote controls to the substation if required, or if they cannot carry out the requirements using a remote control, they would dispatch somebody to the substation based on the information provided by the D20. So what do we have in a substation? We have transformers, circuit breakers, insulator, isolators, uh, bus grounding, uh, arresters, switch gear, reactors, VTs and CTs, and regulators. All of this information is normally uh, changed into one of these six types, which is a digital input, a digital output, a counter or accumulator, an analog input, an analog output, or a device. So the D20 comes in two types of chassis. There is the uh, vertical uh, vertical chassis and then there is the horizontal chassis. In the horizontal chassis, depending on the type of the board, you might be able to fit one, two, or three board. In the vertical chassis, you have the option of fitting uh, more boards in, in there. If you have a single board, then we normally call it a D20, whether it's vertical or horizontal. Um, if you have more than one board, then we call it a D200, right? And that's basically if it is uh, vertical or horizontal. So if you have one of these boards inside the chassis, then we would call it a D20. If you have more than one of these boards, that's a D200. Um, the common question is why would we need a D20 or a D200? Like why would you need more than one board? Well. Many factors uh, come into play. Uh, you want stronger processing power. You want uh, more uh, more uh, uh, memory for your applications to run. Uh, you want more applications. You want more serial ports. So all of that is uh, playing uh, into deciding whether you need a D20 or a D200. Okay, the communication on the D200, you've got the RS-232, uh, you've got uh, a WESDAC D20 modem support, you've got a CPU, and you've got uh, an EME card, which, are, which is basically a memory expansion card if needed, and uh, you've got uh, um, applications. So we've got a library of about 300 plus uh, protocol applications. So. The D20 is a modular design. It allows for simple expansion of I.O. cards, so you can have as many uh, I.O. cards as required in order to collect data from the substation. These I.O. cards basically uh, would be wired directly to a marshalling cabinet or maybe directly to the, to the point if they're in the close proximity of a transducer or close proximity of um, of the sensor that needs to be wired to these I.O. cards, right? So the, the main components when we want to learn about the D20 is we've got the D20 chassis, which is horizontal, the I.O. card, 
which could be either a digital I.O. card, an analog I.O. card, uh, uh, a digital output I.O. card, or uh, a combination card, which has digital input, digital output, analog inputs. The same for the uh, vertical chassis, you can connect the same cards through the D.20 uh, port. Okay, it is uh, flexible, it has support for serial I.O. Uh, it has embedded applications which allow you to do more than just communicating with the devices, but you can do um, uh, basically processing of information. For example, load shedding or uh, AVC, or automatic voltage control, or uh, do a ladder logic using our uh, logic links uh, application. Okay, the, the types of cards, the types of peripherals that can be connected to the D20. So the D20 has the ability you know, to communicate with many devices in the substation, but it also has the ability to collect data using its own I.O. cards. And these I.O. cards is the D20S, which has 64 digital inputs, D20A, which has 32 DC analog input, a D20K has a 32 control output. A D20KI, it's used as an interposer relay. It has about eight relays, and this goes hand in hand with our D20K. Uh, the D20C or uh, combinations, you've got a C0, a C1, and a C2, and the C0 has 16 digital inputs, eight digital outputs. The C1 has 16 digital inputs, eight digital outputs, 16 analog inputs, and the C2 has 16 digital inputs, eight digital outputs, uh, eight analog inputs, and eight analog outputs. And then we've got uh, the AC board, the D20 AC, which has 15 channels uh, of AC connections for your uh, CTs and VTs. In this segment, we're going to show you how to uh, place an order for a D20 uh, MX or ME. Um, basically, you would go to store.gedigitalenergy.com and then under substation automation, you can select the gateways. Under the gateways, you will find all the product lines of the D20 and the D20 parts and accessories. Um, as you know, the D20 MX is our latest uh, um, uh, RTU or gateway so I'm gonna click on the D20 MX and for the D20 MX I can select whether I want the 10 100 base TX uh, the 10 the 100 base FX or the 100 base FX Ethernet rear access instead of the front access Okay, so that's for the main CPU. Okay, the next thing that we can select is the power supply. And basically on this power supply, how, uh, how much power is required and what type of power input is required. So we've got the 20 to 60 volts, 24 volt ISO, 48 volt ISO, or the 100 to 300 volt DC, 24 volt and 48 volt ISO. You can also select any of the auxiliary parts. For example, a WestDAC D20 uh, uh, bin modem or a Telenetics uh, modem. Uh, and uh, you have the option of either a 19 inch uh, Western panel uh, which can be uh, mounted on the rack or D20 chassis mounted serial I.O. Western panel or a D20 chassis serial I.O. Western panel with extended brackets to put it on the rack. Okay. Um, from a firmware perspective, at this point we are using uh, firmware version 1.4. Uh, there is a couple of versions coming uh, later this year. Um, and there is version 1.5 and 1.6. Each version will have its own list of applications. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to see it in software segments. Um, the D2X classic license, right? 
whether you want a, a, a classic application uh, license at this point that's the only license that's available and the D20MX automation license uh, whether you want another advanced automation license and that's about it for building the um, the application and the board and the power supply and the backplane chassis that's what you need to select for a D20MX order now once you select that you will get the following applications with the application ID and version number based on the firmware that you have selected. It will also allow you to have the executor of logic links which can be purchased separately if required and you will have all the DTAs and the standard DTAs and DPAs example the DMP DPA the IEC 6870-5-101 uh, 104 DPA and uh, DCA, uh, the Modbus DCA and the Modbus DPA. So the, the ordering has been uh, very simplified from a D20ME or any of our legacy gateways. You can still order our legacy gateways if required or order any of the extra uh, parts. If I want to order an IO module, I can select the I.O. module, let's say a D20 analog, D20A analog input module. And under the D20A module, I can select the adapters, what kind of adapters I'm looking for, for the analogs, uh, the P common, what's the version of my P common, and what is the cable that I would need basically that's the D.20 cable and you're selecting the length of the cable, different lengths uh, of the cable. Um, the last uh, board in a chain of boards would require a terminator to avoid the echo or noise in the D20 communication and that's where you would select your D20 uh, terminator if required. You can also have a duct panel uh, or a LAN option if uh, required. Um, so um, you can download as you config from our technical website or you can uh, order a, a DVD copy of SG config if required at a minimal fee of $25. Um, that's about it for the ordering guide. Um, as you can see it's store.digitalenergy.com. Um, if you need the uh, more clarification, uh, watch other segments that will assist you in understanding the different parts of the ordering.